How's it going guys? Difficult question for internal medicine for 2CK. If you have disagreements with this or think it's weird, don't take it up with me. Take it up with the free 120. Nearly identical question shows up on the form. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L, man underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group or channel down below. Now start the clip. So we have a 54-year-old woman. She has increased swelling of her lower extremities and shortness of breath over the past week. She has a history of type 2 diabetes, melissa, and hypertension. Two weeks ago, she was treated for a UTI with amoxicillin. Lisinopril was also commenced at the time. Her current vitals are temperature 98.6 Fahrenheit, heart rate 110, respiratory rate 18, blood pressure 180 over 100. Auscultation of the chest demonstrates an S3 heart sound and diffuse bilateral crackles. There's 2 plus pretibial pitting edema bilaterally. Laboratory studies show blood urea nitrogen 50 milligrams per deciliter should be under 20. Serum creatinine 4.1 milligrams per deciliter, normal range 0 0.7 to 1.2. Once you've hit a creatinine of 2, you've lost about 90% of your renal function. There's no blood in the urine. Question wants to know the most likely diagnosis. Let's just whip through the answer choices here. We'll go backwards. Should I see proliferative glomerulonephritis? Wrong fucking answer. This is another way of seeing PSGN. And this shows up, post streptococcal glomerulonephritis, and this shows up on the new step one form. So when we see this term here, proliferative glomerulonephritis, we, you know, we think of other fancy sounding diagnoses, mem membrano proliferative glomerulonephritis, diffuse proliferative glomerulonephritis. But you need to know, if you were to wiki this, okay, it's just another way of saying PSGN. Now it's a long discussion, of course, contrasting it with IJ nephropathy. I've made other clips on this. But of course, it's just uh, red urine one to three weeks after uh, a sore throat, okay, strep pharyngitis. It can be following cutaneous infections as well, high yield for pediatrics. They'll give you yellow crusties on the skin in Pitigo for seven days, and now we've got red urine. Okay, as I said, long discussion. Point is, wrong fucking answer. Choice D, pre-renal isotemia, wrong answer. Now, this is where the question gets hard. It's because we clearly have congestive heart failure here. We've got left heart failure signs, the S3 heart sound, dilated left ventricle with systolic dysfunction. We've got... Uh, diffuse crackles in the lungs, that's pulmonary edema, increased pulmonary capillary wedge pressure with increased pulmonary capillary hydrostatic pressure. We've got the right heart failure, uh, pitting edema bilaterally. So left heart failure plus right heart failure equals congestive heart failure, which is a high yield ideology for prenal, but our BUN to creatinine ratio clearly is not 20 or greater. Now, I've made other clips talking about this. It's not mandatory that it has to be like that 100% of the time. They can give you a fractional excretion of sodium under 1%. In this same question, we'd be like, cool, it's pre-renal, even though the BU and creatinine ratio is not what we expect. They do that on 2CK sometimes, okay? They can give you the same fucking question, and if they said fractional excretion of sodium under 1%, we would say, no fucking idea why the BU and creatinine ratio isn't greater than 20, but the FINA is more important and more accurate. And as I said, it's on some of the 2CK questions, so you need to know FINA overrides BU and creatinine ratio if you see them both. So... A bit unusual, okay? We say congestive heart failure, but it's not going to be pre-renal here. So let's just keep moving through the answer choices. Choice C, obstructive uropathy, wrong answer. No reason to suspect any type, type of obstruction. Uh, it could be cancer in a female, right? It could be cervical cancer, ovarian cancer. Uh, obviously, in a male, you think of uh, BPH, uh, but uh, just wrong answer, okay? Nothing to suspect that. Choice B, interstitial nephritis, wrong answer. Now, also another tricky component is the patient was on a beta-lactam, okay? I mean, interstitial nephritis, obviously it's gonna be a beta-lactam, cephalosporin, NSAID, and then you get eosinophil slash white blood cells in the urine following, okay? If it's caused by NSAIDs, you can get edema, all right? So even though the patient wasn't on NSAIDs here, so it's hard to piece together what's actually happening, right? We say there was a beta-lactam, but it's not interstitial nephritis in this case. They don't mention the white blood cells in the urine. No eosinophils in the urine. The correct answer is acute kidney injury. Now, some of you watching this say, well, why is this hard? Clearly, we have renal failure with the high creatinine and BUN. Okay, I mean, what's so difficult? It's the etiology, as I said earlier. This is acute heart failure causing acute kidney injury. All right? So it's extremely high yield. You know that in general, for many USMLE questions, you will get a patient who has ongoing congestive heart failure and they want pre-renal. That's a really important association to know. So in this case, when we look at this vignette, we say, yeah, this is congestive heart failure, okay? But it's acute and that can cause acute kidney injury, all right? So when we have acute drop in blood flow to the kidney, that causes acute tubular necrosis, not pre-renal. So if there's a loss of blood during surgery or, or trauma, Okay, or uh, there's an episode of arrhythmia, ventricular fibrillation, where they, there's uh, 30 seconds of decreased blood flow to the kidney. 
that causes acute tubular necrosis, not prerenal. That sounds really fucking weird to many students because you say, well, isn't prerenal decreased blood flow to the kidney? But the PCT is highly susceptible to anoxic slash hypoxic injury due to the high concentration of ATPase transporters. So when there's an acute drop in blood flow to the kidney, all right, that's ATN, not prerenal, super fucking high yield. And that's what we have here, all right? So acute heart failure causing acute kidney injury. ATN. You know the deal. I'm going to continue to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.